Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to The Advocate. As usual, The Advocates are diagnosing problems as well as proffering solutions. This week, we're pointing to truths right under our noses. Ruki is back to state that women have a right to choose. Oh, before Uncle. Libera says it's not rocket science that absolute power is a function of holding both the yam and the knife. Interesting. Balahon's advocacy also speaks of greed, the proliferation of unoccupied mansions in a land of poverty. Incredible. Ekene says it's simpler that we have made it and that success is a winning brand. Simple, really. Whereas I'm saying the NBC should get real and not embark on a fool's errand. Direct enough for you? Although we are visionary in our advocacies, we're also realists. And it's time for a reality check after the break. Setting out with an unrealistic goal is as good as a failed mission. I'm going to be talking about the NBC's sixth code and the challenge to digital democracy. The NBC has included in its sixth code the task of regulating broadcasting on the internet. Really? Regulating terrestrial broadcasting is enough a challenge for the NBC, coupled with delivering on the digital switchover promise without taking on the humongous burden of regulating broadcasting on the internet. Recall that the Advertising Practitioners Council of Nigeria, APCON, had experimented with making internet users pay for adverts created and distributed online to the agency in the recent past. And they've seen how utterly ambitious it is. The NBC now toes the same path with this policy, when it glaringly lacks the manpower to embark on this increasingly controversial decision. I see this new policy as a deliberate attempt to frustrate digital inclusion and diversity. This policy undermines the contributions of an army of young Nigerians who have turned to the internet to actualize their dreams in broadcasting. These Nigerians, old and young, new entrants in the media and professionals who have years of practice under their belts, have turned to social media platforms to showcase their talents and distribute their work. They're creating and distributing content which are getting noticed by the masses and specialized sectors. And this recognition is bringing them social, cultural, material, and financial capital. And in turn, it's providing both pseudo employment and employment for thousands of unemployed Nigerians. And then those who lack the financial wherewithal to place programs on traditional radio and TV are falling back on mobile devices to share their productions. We have seen share ingenuity since the COVID-inspired lockdown in Nigeria. And but for the activities of citizens on social media, many would not have survived the pandemic thus far. And that's so true. Edison Research and Triton Digital Statistics in its 2019 annual social media study says women constitute the largest users of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. Many women are able to use social media to sell their startup businesses and services to their friends, their families. MBC's latest move would essentially destroy the access to these gender-friendly platforms for women and again, it was stifle creativity, content creation and distribution, and please, press freedom as well. 
This policy is anti-people, it is inimical to the growth of the creative industry and catastrophic for young creatives who have found outlets on the internet for their creative ideas. I think it is foolhardy, an exercise in futility and a waste of energy. The NBC, I think, should rather reinvent its duties in the broadcast industry to reflect the realities and the demands of this digital age. It should redirect its efforts at ensuring quality content and sanity on Nigerian airways. It should invest in skilled manpower and state-of-the-art equipment to effectively monitor, and that's the, the bulk of what they should be doing. It should mandate local broadcasters to produce relatable and competing content with the offerings on cable TV stations operating in the country. The broad broadcast regulator should save the nation the embarrassment of tuning to cable TV operators to even enjoy clear signals from our terrestrial TV and radio stations. And we need compelling programs on our local TV and radio stations. It should, NBC should indigenize and contextualize policies copied from abroad to reflect our peculiar challenges. Responsible and responsive media governance starts from here for both NBC as a regulator and its supervising ministry. Thank you so much for that. I'll just say that very quickly. I'm sure um, Ruki and uh, Bola have a lot to say as well. But um, thank you for that, for collating that. Um, what you need to ask, what I keep asking in my mind is why do people prioritize regulation? I used to always, for the longest time, I thought NBC's main task was to rein, you know, regulate. I've worked in compliance abroad, and I know that a lot of times the issues they raise in compliance have to do with what the general public are raising. They're responding to what the general, they're not by themselves going out to be the watchdog. You know, right. they're responding to, so, you know, when I was in compliance, for example, you had letters coming in, you collate them, you know, you put all the ones in different categories. If something was flagged up several times, then you addressed it. This is with the BBC. So now you're looking at NBC and they're prioritizing, you know, essentially going after what they feel is dangerous use of whatever online. I would like to see why. And the current NBC DG, I've, I've sort of listened to him and I feel he has what makes me concerned. He has a concerning, do you say, do you, he's, he's biased against, to me, free speech. That's what I think. He seems to be towing the line of the government. And we have all said in times past that we're not happy with this anti-free speech, hate speech bills and social media bills. So why are they prioritizing this? They're not doing what they ought to be doing. So I, I support you in that sense. It's beginning saying, to look like that's you're, you're what you're not saying to Providing an enabling the environment, then you're stifling free speech. So exactly. it really doesn't make me very happy. And I think, I'm glad you've raised this. I think we need to be watching them as well as holding, yeah. you know, are find you, a way of getting behind, uh, holding I, them accountable, yes. The issue is simple. Um, here, when you work in, um, you know, as a regulator, especially in most of these government regulatory agencies, you see yourself as government. You don't, oh, really? um, yes, yes. You I don't say this. identify you don't, with the people. You don't need to identify with the people. You don't owe the people you, any. Yes, you act, the legions you so act well. as, you know, an extension of, you know, the president, the minister. And so you become a mouthpiece rather than even regulating government itself. Okay. And, and so that's why it is the same mentality that, you know, that government, um, you know, elected officials have here. And that's the same mentality you see the uh, regulators as a bit. But they forget that, like you said, as a regulator, you are supposed to gauge the feel of the public. What are those things that, you know, ought to be regulated? What are those other things that People we are, are not doing by, well? Yeah. yeah. So you take on those things, understand them as a regulator, look at them from a professional point of view, and then find a way of either answering or regulating. But here, somebody just sits down and brings up an idea. And then the next question is, how do we make money from it? Wow. Oh, so the, the driving force, first and foremost, is money. And can we make money from control, this? People. And control, which is even more yeah. sinister. And, and so, okay, we forget the second one of control. The first one is money. Okay. And, and so if it will bring money to them, and then because government also wants to achieve, like you said, maybe control, and then, and then you now begin to ask yourself, like Rookie, um, sorry, Treasure had yes. asked, you don't even have the capacity to monitor your local Which, TV stations okay, and regulate them. The yeah. Now you want to go to the internet where it is almost an impossibility for you. I'm wondering how you don't even it. have the wherewithal, the, the the equipment to do that. And then the saddest part is that when these regulations are put in place, there is a targeted audience or market that they want to regulate. Mind yes. is not everybody. Uh, that's what came so they mind. use that code to target them. To target them and then 
you, you know, that's all. Mm. Perhaps Golahon will have something to say and, and, and we can... Uh, rookie. Okay, so let me jump in here. You know, you just mentioned something very pertinent to me. You talked about the people using the social media platform. You talked about women and young yes. people. Yeah, yeah. So the older generation can compete in this environment. And if you really look at Nigeria, some businessman that come on the other day, I forgot, I think he was the owner of a bank. He had said that why are young people not um, leading? Why are they not in politics? Why are they not governors? The average is 60 or 70, 80. These are our presidents because they have totally snuffed that whole environment so that young people can compete. They don't have the money. They don't have godfathers and things like that. And so this is the only place people can come and excel and get noticed and, and really you know, bring their talents out, whether it's Nollywood or new music or you know, new new um, innovations that they are working on, even shooting um, productions. So my concern is the older generation who are the government are now taking all the juicy spots so you can find, barely find a young 40-year-old or 30-year-old um, president in Nigeria. That's a dream. Or even a woman, you know, being, being a senator, how many of them? Then you want to come into where they're thriving to regulate them further so they cannot do what they need to do. I think that's really concerning. Obviously, there's a conflict of interest when you are um, the government and the same people are um, appointing all these heads of uh, NBC and all this, so they have to answer to their bosses. And okay. so for me, it's a very difficult um, area to to support. I, there's no way I can support that. How do we regulate and, the NBC? And for, Let's for sure, hear we from have... Let's yeah. quickly hear from Bola. Yeah. yeah. This looks to me like a backdoor attempt to smuggle in elements of uh, either the hate speech bill or the social media bill, whatever you want to call it, in a way. And I, I also like the last paragraph, particularly, uh, because it was talking about how we need to um, adapt some of the current program. You, you, you get on the media, and 75% of what you're consuming are foreign without elements of, um, uh, of adaptation to the local environment. I think there's a lot of work to be space. So NBC should rather be driving things like a, a, a robust content. Honestly, I, I would want to follow up on this thing in the future. I know we're not, we don't have enough time to say, yeah. how do we regulate these regulatory bodies so that they represent <laughs> us? Yeah, they need to Regulating represent us. Regulating the regulatory who watches, body. Who That's the exit over the water. point. Yes. We've been saying that failure is a function of wrong objectives. After the break, Rookie points to a fundamental flaw in society's outlook. <laughs> 